this was not what I expected either. <laughs> I was hoping for about 12 people and <laughs> knowing nine of them. And, uh, but if we're ready, truthfully, in the beginning, I had no creative process at all and no need for one. I did hand painted uh, greeting cards, one of a kind, as gifts for family and friends. But an agent of all things handmade found me and the business of art began. I needed at least six different designs for all occasions, and I needed to create a catalog. So um, let's say we have a birthday. You need a cake, you need candles, hats, gift boxes, maybe some familiar games or quotes, anything that's related, and then figure out how to represent that. My next thought had to be making sure that the art that I chose would be easy enough for me to repeat. I had a project with over 75,000 cards at one point, so you don't want to have anything complicated based on that. You find out that after selling to a buyer, even though they know that these things are handmade, every tiny detail that they saw on the sample is what they want. It's a huge factor in your design. You figure out how to not do a whole bunch of little dots and little uh, <laughs> curly cues. So you do something that's simple, gets simplified, and it's something that you love every time you do it. I have a group that made a group of cards for a friend, and he asked me if I could convert that design from a card to a painting. And he gave me a four foot by four foot canvas. So from an inch painting, I created a four foot canvas and had to have something in mind that was bigger than anything I had ever imagined. The uh, paintings that I did after that were at first on canvas and then I moved here and found that my great grandma's house had been torn down and there was a pile of wood and I started working on wood. I love the texture of it and I love the life that's in it. There's a lot of, uh, you lose your restrictions with wood. Once you get started cutting it, that you can cut any shape you want, any length, any width, whatever it is you want. And one thing leads to another organically with that. I, st I started off, like I said, with a one inch square and now I love things that are four feet tall and three inches wide. And you need to remember that uh, this thing is something that you're developing and be able to change and let it be exactly what it wants to be. Uh, as I said before, it's be it started with canvas and then it became wood. I, um, some of the things I started cutting with anything but found out that I uh, found a saw that I could use and glue that would hold and no matter what you're doing, you find people that are always ready to give you some advice that do something similar to what you do and are excited to show you some tips. I don't always draw things out on um, with paper. Usually I find the piece of wood that I want and then I cut what doesn't belong. But sometimes you're stretching your imagination and you want to see if what you're thinking is really as interesting as it seems in your head. Um, I found that when I layered some paintings I would see a shadow on the other piece and I love that. So a lot of the things that I do wound up over time becoming two or three layers that would cast the shadow on the wall and that would for me become part of the painting as well. I do a series of women and this particular one um, had absolutely no personality. She turned out uh, where she didn't like her hair, it was too short and beige was not really her color. And finally, after having her sitting in the corner for a while, she bloomed. And for me, <laughs> she had her own story. She, there was a mystery about her that I liked. And um, she had a top that she liked much better. She just needed her bangs trimmed a little bit. But other than that, she, was, she had come into her own. My agent asked me, um, to design a booth for her uh, at the National Stationery Show based on some of the different layering I was doing. This looks just a little crazy, but what it is is a, the drawing that I did for a dragon that is um, 19 feet long. It goes around a corner. This is its head, and I did 
the same as I do with the wood where I'm cutting and layering and um, it's made of a uh, half inch foam core and this head was four feet across. The, the dragon itself is eight feet in the air and uh, so I got to go there and set it up. I paint on everything and I've been doing my uh, greeting, my uh, sorry, my business cards where I write on the business card and then I do a painting on the back. Sometimes I get a little help I'm uh, drawing and painting most of the time. When I'm not, I'm thinking about it. It's important, I think, to keep evolving, trying different things. Not huge differences, but give yourself a little push. There's uh, always an audience for the different things that we do, and they're waiting for you to see what it is that you do next. Here's how things grow for me. For I did invitations for my daughter's baby shower, and I made a little girl in a tutu. That became three little girls on a greeting card. And then 52 ballerinas on a four foot long board for my granddaughter. And recently that ballerina grew up and she now lives with the Kansas City Ballet Company. I do as many art shows as I can. This is my booth space that I create an environment for my paintings to live in. And it's an extension of my art whatever art I'm showing. I have four different sets of uh, walls and floors for my paintings, and as I see it, it's just more art. We all have a gift, and my advice to you is to look deeper into yours. Most of us, uh, myself included, only scratch the surface of what we can really do. I love what I'm doing now, and I want people to experience art, and I offer it in every way that I possibly can.